Hi, I'm Andy from Cisco. Today, we are going to talk about how to configure LAN and remote management web access on the RV130 and RV130W routers. Clients that are either connected to the LAN or WAN interface of the router or from a remote location can access the router's web configuration utility and make changes to the device. Configuration of LAN VPN web access can allow clients on the local area network to connect to the router securely via Secure Socket Layer Protocol. Configuration of remote management web access can allow clients from outside the corporate network to connect to the router via its WAN IP address using either the HTTP or HTTPS communications protocol. First, log in to the web configuration utility. To configure the LAN access, you have to make sure that the service is enabled in the firewall basic settings. Navigate to Firewall Basic Settings and locate the LAN VPN web access field. Choose HTTP if you want HTML elements from your websites to be sent directly to the client device. Note that connecting to websites via HTTP is faster than HTTPS. Choose HTTPS if all of the web pages on your domain have an SSL certificate authenticated with the associating web server. Note that HTTPS allows for bi-directional encryption between the client and the website. You can also enable both checkboxes if you want versatility in how your clients access the router. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will check both checkboxes. In the Remote Management field, check the checkbox to enable administrators remote access to the device web configuration utility. Underneath this field, check either the HTTP or HTTPS radio button that will correspond to the type of remote access protocol you want. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will choose HTTPS as it is more secure than HTTP. Locate the Remote Upgrade field and check the Enable checkbox to allow administrators to upgrade the device from a remote WAN. Note that when you remotely upgrade the router, you will lose connection to the router as a router reboots itself once the firmware upgrade is completed. Therefore, remote administrators should be aware that connectivity to the router will depend on network availability. Underneath this field, click the Any IP Address radio button to allow remote clients to connect to the router. Or click the radio button below and manually enter a range of allowed IP addresses that can connect to the router. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will choose Any IP Address. In the Remote Management port, enter the port number on which you have enabled remote access. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will choose the default port number 443. Finally, click Save to save your settings. When you access the router from a remote location, you must append the remote management port as part of the IP address, separated by a colon. For example, that concludes our tutorial. We hope this video helped you, and please don't hesitate to visit our support community. Here you can find additional support in a thriving community of global users and experts. I'm Andy from Cisco, and thanks for watching.